Hello and let's talk about the middle class. This is in the context of the latest data released by the Center for Monitoring the Indian Economy. Reports have focused on the fact that there has been an improvement in urban employment, which is now at 35.1% for the week ending on July 19th. The overall unemployment rate is around 7.9%. Thus, according to the organization, around 18 million additional people are without jobs over the past few months. At the peak of the lockdown induced unemployment, around 122 million people were without jobs. An equally important issue, however, is the question of rise in incomes. Now, this is increment season usually, and as all of us know, very, company, very few companies are taking that move this year. Many instead are resorting to firing employees. So what does this stagnation of income mean for India society and especially the middle classes? We talked to journalist Anandya Chakravarti to find out. Thank you, Anandya, for joining us. So the CMI, CMI numbers have all kinds of indications, especially about the employment rate and the unemployment rate, basically. But one of the yeah. key issues which you talked about in the past and which you've been focusing on a lot is how this affects various sectors of the Indian society and the economy. And specifically in this case, the question of the middle class. So could yeah. you talk a bit about how, uh, say, for, as an introduction, maybe to begin with, which section gets hit the most and how especially the middle class is getting affected? So, you know, uh, the point is when we say that the middle class gets uh, impacted the most, we are saying this in relative terms. Because mm -hmm. if you look at it, uh, Prashant, the generally poor people, their income doesn't go up. We know that in the past few years, their real income has actually dropped. Right. And even if the real income increases, it inc increases very marginally. What I mean is that if someone's being paid 5,000 rupees to work in a house uh, to, you know, do the typical jhadu pocha bartan, it is very unlikely that the next year, even if inflation is 10%, their uh, monthly salary will be increased to 5,500. It's not going to happen, right? right so right. increments take place for poor people. Their uh, income goes up after every two, three years and maybe in uh, lump sum amounts. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it does not. So right. uh, often they face higher inflation than their income goes up. And therefore, right, right. generally we see that the number of people who say that their income has gone up compared to last year tends to be low. So if you take April to June last year, uh, mm -hmm. those who were earning less than 6,000 rupees per month as mm -hmm. family income, mm -hmm. only 14 out of 100 said that their income has gone up. And we know that uh, for the past few years, uh, income growth has been bad for almost every section. Right. Uh, this time, only 1% of these people, 1%, 1 in 100 said their income has gone up chances are that most would have seen their income decrease mm -hmm. and very few would have seen their income more or less remaining stable. Now, this is not always calculated as often a perception. It's not that poor people always calculate how much they made, but their sense is that it has not risen. Uh, but we have to say that uh, when we look at government uh, relief package, the minuscule, you know, the minuscule relief that the uh, Modi government has given, it has targeted largely the poorest people. So you'll see uh, some amount of free ration, whether it's gone or not is a separate issue, but uh, some amount of it has already gone. Whether you see Manrega, Manrega, uh, the number of days has increased, even though demand could not be met. Right. And, uh, and we've seen money being transferred to some extent to uh, uh, poor women in their Jandhan accounts. We know that PM Kisan 2,000 rupees was given earlier than the installment was supposed to come. By now, it's going to catch up. But the point is that some amount of, uh, some sort of a support system was provided to the poor when we saw their income was falling or being, remaining stagnant. When we go above that, so uh, the data shows that those who earn 5 lakh rupees per year, now this right. is not a huge salary uh, in terms of, uh, in urban areas, 40 odd thousand rupees for a family with two kids, and maybe an aged parent is not a lot, right. uh, but but we still consider that to be a part of the middle class. Now, approximately 40, 42,000 rupees. Last year, about 50% of them said that their income had gone up. So we know why that would happen because mm -hmm. between April to June, most people get their increments. So right. even if half of them got increments, whether they work in uh, government, uh, uh, you know, in government sector or outside in private sector, right. and then you would have seen uh, that income go up. So half. Now that is not good. We know that is not good because it still means that a large number of people, at least half of the people, their real, real income has gone up, gone down because they still have to catch up with, um, you know, the inflation rate. 
So right. uh, this year, uh, I think less than 15% have seen an income growth right. in this category. Less than 15%, which means 85 out of 100 uh, middle class families, middle middle class families have seen no income growth and most likely they've seen an income decline. Right. And they are facing a 6% inflation right now. So inflation is up, food prices are up, but they are seeing a decline in their income. When we go a little higher, right? When uh, one looks at those who were earning about one, one and a half, one and, uh, lakh rupees a month, mm -hmm. uh, this is a where you would put upper middle class category. Right. These are the people who, you know, they're the buying classes. They go to the restaurants, they order on Zomato and Swiggy and stuff like that. They buy in the malls. They just send, send their children to public schools. Right. Uh, private schools, as uh, we tend to call public, <laughs> private schools, public schools. But what I mean is private schools. Now, these people, uh, those above 1.5 lakh. Now, last year, Again, approximately 70% of them said that their income had increased. Right. And this year, 0%, no one, 0%, 0% of these people have seen an income increase. But when you go to 2 to 3 lakh rupees, now maybe there's a June impact because from, we know that from May, June, the stock markets went up. So those with stock market investments, property return, uh, you know, their income has still more or less led, stayed uh, stable. Right. People earning more than 2 lakh rupees a month. Uh, if, you, if you had thought about it five years ago, I can guarantee 100% of them would have said that their income has increased between April and June. Right? Uh, last year, only 70 odd percent said their income had increased, which itself shows that there is a contraction in demand taking place even at the upper end. This year, that has dropped to 33%. So 70% has dropped to 33% even in the most affluent lot of people whose income inevitably increases every year. Even there we've seen that. So if you look at it, the middle class has essentially got nothing. Even the upper middle class has probably not got nothing, anything right. where affluent class has got nothing. But you know, they can still live off their savings. They're saving more right now. They're reducing expenditure because exactly. the lockdown is forcing them to reduce expenditure. Uh, frankly, there's no need to shed tears for them. But uh, one can argue that in normal circumstances, yes, there's a bit of redistribution taking place. And the middle class shouldn't be earning so much. Why should they earn with, uh, you know, 80% of Indians earn so little? Right. That's all very well to say. But, you know, when uh, the economy is doing badly, when things are looking uncertain, at a time like this, when your income doesn't increase, in fact, decreases, right. then there's a larger impact on the economy. Right. So just to go a bit into that impact, uh, like you said, there are some, there is a lot of saving that is probably taking place, at least for some sections of the middle class. And yeah. you can argue that there is some relief that is being provided, even minuscule to the poorer classes. So yeah. in terms of uh, spending itself, what role do they actually play? So does, uh, does the role they play in terms of spending, does it get matched or uh, say, does it get, uh, can it be met by the fact that they're saving? So does that work out that way? So, you know, the point is that in the last 30 odd years, we've seen that India's economy has been oriented entirely to catered to about 20% of Indians, right? Okay. Everything that is produced, every service that is produced is aimed at catering to them because they are the people who can pay money. And the more you, I mean, no private company is here to do charity. So they're out there to make profits and they right. think this is the place where we'll make profit. Mm -hmm. And 20% in an Indian context is a large number. And maybe 20% itself is an uh, inflated number. I would say not more than 10% actually uh, amount account for most of the demand for consumer goods and uh, services that we see around us and right. and they in terms uh, also from their savings and their capital investments they account for also the capital demand for capital goods indirectly right, right? Uh, so if i uh, look at it you can say that over a period of time this needs to be addressed and changed mm -hmm. india needs to be a, an economy which can cater to the lower income group it needs to produce things for the lower income group right no private sector company is going to do that it has to be done by the government through planning, by looking at what is needed, what a society needs. But when you see that income, con uh, you know, we have seen how contraction in income at the upper end, right, disposable income at the upper end has affected the economy. Car sales, uh, sales of 
even alcohol, drinks, anything you look at, it, it has gone down, right? Uh, so when you look at that uh, housing, so when these people reduce their, uh, uh, I mean, their income goes down even further and their expenditure goes down even further because they're uncertain, they're scared. There's going to be a bigger demand uh, impact on the entire way in which our economy is oriented. And that is going to affect everyone even more. So when you can't sell to the people you were always selling to, so if auto manufacturers were uh, hiring people and paying them uh, salaries in lakhs, right? Suddenly they're not being able to sell. What are they going to do? They will have to downsize. They will have to, I mean, downsize is an euphemism. They will essentially have to sack people, cut salaries, replace people uh, at a particular level with cheaper, uh, you know, employees. So this is going to happen and that is going to have a demand effect itself. So right. income and, you know, expenditure are two sides of the same coin. It's not as if they can be done two separate, uh, separately. It's not that we have a class of people who only produce and a class of people who consistently consume. So this is a very, very bad situation, which is a, which is a vicious cycle. And there has to be, it, it's a situation where it, it, the standard arguments that we could make, uh, saying that there has to be redistribution, it's okay, the middle class has to uh, suffer for a while and must sacrifice. Those things don't hold water because this is not the time to do that. The middle right. class will have to be given something, maybe even tax incentives, whatever. Because when the middle class doesn't spend, it stops uh, uh, buying. And when it doesn't buy, it stops earning. It's as simple as that. So exactly. uh, it's a thing which is going to suddenly make the uh, economy collapse. Right. And it's interesting that actually the government hasn't been focusing much on it, considering that many of these sections were among its most ardent supporters, maybe still continue to be its most ardent supporters. I think it doesn't have to simply because this section continues to be an ardent supporter. They will, uh, I think the government has got its game pretty well in place. They know that middle class, most of which are, you know, upper forward castes. They are, many of them are tra traditional BJP, the catchment area of the BJP in that sense. And uh, the traditional vote base, they know that uh, 50, 66, 65% of these people will vote for them, right? And if you look at, uh, go down the ladder, even then 45 odd percent will vote for them. So they then have to catch another, uh, the lowest lot, right? So you need two things. You need these people who will vote for you when they turn up, because they also don't turn up to vote, right? right? And the poor who turn up in large numbers to vote, you need to hold them, you need to give them something, and you need money. So what this government is doing, you need money to fight elections. So what it's doing is it's targeting big business and making life very easy for them. This is almost a big business sarkar, as we can see, right? So big business makes big money. Uh, it basically becomes monopolies. It uh, gradually takes over uh, public assets. And, and then what you see is essentially uh, they have a reason to keep funding uh, the party. So you get money and you get votes from the bottom. So this is a nice alliance done. But uh, it could reach a tipping point uh, where uh, the middle class actually shifts because we know that the middle class is a very fickle entity. Right. right? So uh, that's, a, that's a danger it's playing with. And I don't think the government has any solution to that. But, you know, it might announce some SOPs soon because this is now becoming a big problem. Because if you go online, Prashant. And there are many of these small uh, uh, companies online which sell, uh, you know, the specific kind of goods, which are all targeting the upper middle class. Right. They're all out there with massive sales because mm -hmm. they're trying to clear the stocks. And uh, uh, many of them will go out of business. Many have gone out of business. We know that Uber has shut its Mumbai office permanently. We know that most companies have cut salaries, removed people. And these are, these are people who buy things Every day, they're always doing retail therapy. It's not that easy for us to sustain uh, private manufacturing, private sector uh, service, uh, so private services sector, uh, if these people don't run. Thank you so much, Arundhya, for talking to us. Thanks a lot. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back on Monday with more news developments from the country. Until then, keep watching NewsClick.